Okay, welcome again uh, to the this other wonderful topic that we are looking at. So this is uh, we are still looking at the first topic because this this first topic is just very long, very long. Remember last time uh, uh, we are also looking at the same the 19th and 20th centuries immigrants into Central Africa. So remember last time we are looking at uh, we just looked at the two. We looked at the Yao as well as the, the Lome. We looked at these two groups, how they migrated into Malawi. Now, uh, we are continuing this time. So this time around, we are focusing on the Ngoni. So by the end of this, we are going to look at the three groups that we are going to focus much. We'll look at the Ngoni of Swangendawa, that is the Jere Ngoni. Then we'll look at the Maseko Ngoni. Then we'll look at the Ndevere. So these three groups are the ones that we are going to look how they entered Central Africa, how uh, they migrated into Central Africa. So this is yet uh, still another wonderful part uh, on uh, this uh, form three work. So let's start uh, with the, the Ngoni. So the Ngoni uh, were a product of Mfekane. They were the product of Mfekane. So the term Mfekane, uh, this one, it was used to describe the political instability uh, in the Natal region between 1816 and 1918. So there was a uh, political instability in Natal or KwaZulu Natal as it is called now. Uh, so there was that political instability between 1816 and 1819. So this period, uh, that instability, it was characterized by tribal rivalries. There were tribal wars there among the Nguni speaking people. So take care here. Uh, when you pronounce Ngoni and Nguni, it, they should differ there. Uh, Ngoni, we mean the people. Nguni speaking people. Nguni is the language now. Uh, Nguni speaking people. Just as uh, when we are looking at the form two work, uh, we said the, the, the Maravi, they were the Bantu speaking people. They were speaking their language, the Bantu language. Yeah. So here they were speaking the Nguni, which is not the Bantu language, yeah, it's the Nguni itself. Yeah. So in an effort to dominate others, different groups or different chief, chief, chiefdoms, they began to form powerful kingdoms under uh, a single uh, political ruler. So that's what happened there. Uh, uh, chiefdoms or uh, clans or tribes, they began to uh, recognize uh, their leaders, their special leaders, so that they dominate others. So that one caused instability in uh, in Natal or in South Africa. As a result of uh, uh, power, uh, as a result of that power hunger, then uh, chiefdoms, they emerged. They were uh, the powerful chiefdoms that emerged. So among the powerful chiefdoms, they were the Ndwandwe. The Ndwandwe, they were under Zuide, Zuide Ngumayo. Zuide was the leader. And there was also another chiefdom uh, of Mtetwa. The Mtetwa, they were under Dingiswai. They were under Dingiswai. Then there were also the uh, the Ngwane. The Ngwane were under Sobuza. Sobuza was their leader. So in a conflict, however, that developed there, Zuide, Zuide of the Ndwandwe here, uh, Zuide, he defeated the Mtetwa. He defeated the Mtetwa in 1818. And in the process, he also uh, killed the leader of the Mtetwa. Who was that? 
Dingiswai. So he was killed. And the group of Dingiswai, that is the Mtetwa, they were absorbed uh, in a Zulu, uh, in a small Zulu chief, chiefdom. So after the Mtetwa were defeated, then it, they were, it was like their power shrinked and they were just absorbed into uh, the major groups of Zwide. So Zwide uh, went on to defeat Sobuza and Ngwane fled to Swaziland. So we have mentioned that these three, they dominated to be, uh, they dominated others. It's not like there were only these three, there were so many, but these three, they emerged to be powerful. But among the powerful, there was one that uh, also dominated others, that is the Ndwandwe of Zwide. So they defeated the Mtetwa, they defeated the Ngwane. So when they defeated the Mtetwa, Mtetwa, the Mtetwa were uh, incorporated or uh, they were absorbed into others. And again, the Ngwane under Sobuza, they were also attacked by Zwide. And the Ngwane, they thought of running away, then they went to Swaziland. However, the rise of Shaka or Shaka to the uh, Zuru throne emerged or ended the uh, glory of Zwide. So when uh, Shaka, when Shaka uh, became the leader now of uh, the Zulu, uh, which uh, comprised or in which the Mtretwa were also part of that, then uh, that one, it emerged to be bigger than that was the Ndwandwe group under Zwide. So from there then, we have to look at uh, different factions that uh, developed there because Shaka Zulu or Shaka, uh, he uh, emerged to be a ruthless ruler. As a result, he was attacking others and uh, uh, there were so many things that were happening uh, that ended the glory of Zwide. So let's see what happened here. So here we are going to look at the origins now of the Jerengoni. Today we have the Jerengoni here in Maui. So what is their origin? How did they find this, themselves to be uh, here in Malawi? So we are going to look at the Jere Ngoni. So the, uh, this group uh, of the Jere Ngoni, they originated from the northern Zululand. The northern Zululand. That is the place of, uh, of Shaka, where Shaka was the leader there. So in their original home, they were led by Zwangendao they were led by Zwangendawa. So Zwangendawa, like his father, his father was the Laskwayo. So he saved uh, Zwide's division, Zwide's division. He was the, um, maybe a commander in Zwide's division. Remember what happened to, uh, to, uh, to Zwide. So he was a, a commander in the Zwide's army. So on arrival in Central Africa, this group, uh, consisted of the people such as the, the Swazi, the Tsonga, the Nsenga, as well as the Karanga. So that's how uh, they uh, made up, uh, that's, uh, those were some of the people who made up this uh, group of the Jere, of the Jere. Now, uh, let's focus on the migration. How did they migrate this Jere, the Jere? We have seen that they originated from the northern Zululand, but how did they migrate? So in 1819, in 1819, Shaka defeated Zwide at the Battle of Umratuze. So Shaka then defeated Zwide. Then after Zwide's defeat, then Zwangendawa, who was the commander of Zwide and his group, they left the Zululand because now uh, there was a change. There was change in leadership. It meant that now uh, it was like a payback time now to say at one point in time Zwide defeated uh, uh, the Mtetwa. Now this Zulu or uh, this Shaka it was uh, a part of the Mtetwa so it was a payback time so it was the time when all the people who were royal to Zwide now they could find that place very 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 bitter to stay. 
That's why it's Wangendawa now. And his group, they left uh, that Zululand. So they went, they started to migrate northwards. They started to uh, go northwards. And then they entered Swaziland. So in Swaziland, they attacked the Swazi and the Songa in the process there. That's why we have said that when they arrived in Central Africa, they were comprised of the other people like the Swazi, the Songa, were part of the people whom they attacked and defeated. And they crossed the Rimpompo, Rimpompo River and entered the southern part of Mozambique where they found uh, Sofshangane and the Ntaba. The Ntaba there. Uh, they found them at a place known as Delgoa. So uh, they stayed there for some time. So they stayed together. They coexisted. So the Jerengoni under Zwangendawa and those uh, under Soshangan and the Ntaba. Those they stayed together in Mozambique uh, in that area until they quarreled at some point in time in 1831. They quarreled. So in that conflict then, uh, Zwangendawa was defeated during that conflict. As such, uh, when he was defeated by the two, that is Soshangane and Ntaba, then Zwangendawa, he left Mozambique and he headed westwards uh, into the Rosui country, that is in Zimbabwe. So from Mozambique, then the Jerengoni, they went to Mozab uh, they went to Zimbabwe. So there in Zimbabwe they destroyed the Rosui uh, people uh, at Kama and Drodro. That's where they defeated the uh, the Rosui in Zimbabwe. Then one section or one part, one group of Zwangendawa's people uh, they were led by Nyamazana. Nyamazana was a female general. He was the army, uh, she was the army commander. And she was the one who defeated the Rosui in also 1834. So the rest of the group uh, proceeded northwards and Nyamazana remained there. She remained behind and her group was later incorporated by the Ndeberi. As we have pointed out, we are also going to look at the Ndebere as we uh, progress in this topic. So she married the leader of uh, the Ndebere, that was the Mzirikazi. So uh, we see to it in Zimbabwe, then the Jere, they split it into two. One group was led by Nyamazana, the female, uh, she remained there. And the other one uh, proceeded. So Nyamazana, we are saying that when she remained there, Later on, when the Ndebere came, she married the leader of the Ndebere by the name Mzirikazi. Then the Ngoni, the other group, uh, they crossed River Zambezi near Zumbo on 19th November 19, or 1835. 19th November 1835. That's when they crossed the River Zambezi. So the day uh, when Mberwa was born. That is, Mberwa was the son of Zwangendawa. So Mberwa was born when they were crossing the river Zambezi in 1835. So due to strong military organization and the assimilation of the conquered people, the Ngoni, they were uh, so successful wherever they, uh, they went uh, north of Zambezi. So how? The question here is how or what made the, uh, the Ngoni to be successful wherever they went? So uh, the simple answer is that they had a strong military organization and not only that, they also assimilated other people. They assimilated the conquered people. When they were attacking people, those who surrendered, they were uh, bringing them into their group to say, now you are part of us, you'll be going with us. They were not uh, like killing them. No, they were assimilating them. So that thing, that element also made the Ngoni to be successful wherever they went. They had a strong military and they were uh, enlarging their numbers by assimilating other people. Then they went westwards. Uh, they devastated the Nsenga of Petauke and captured many, including Shwere and Kofu. Now we talk of Zambia here. So here they entered Zambia, that's where uh, they defeated the Nsenga as well as the Chwere Trovo. So upon entering Malawi, then 
the entered Mavili. Mavili is what we call today uh, Mzimba. Mzimba is what is uh, what was called Mavili. So they settled at Mavili in on 19th September 1940. That's when they arrived in Mala Malawi. Then they caused great deal of trouble there among uh, the Tumbuka as well as the Chewa. So as they were moving, you know, we have just pointed out they were a strong military group. So they were attacking other people for uh, for food now and again. They had uh, they were not farmers themselves. They were in transit. They kept on moving here today, there tomorrow. So uh, it was a uh, entrance. As, a, as such, all the people whom they found along the way, in, on their way, they were attacking them. So that's why we are saying that they caused a great trouble uh, to the Tumbuka and the Chewa. So while they are at Mawiri, they heard that uh, there was a presence of the Red Zebu, the Red Zebu, or the long horned cattle north, uh, north in Ufipa country, that is in southern part of Tanzania. So when they settled in Mzimba, they heard that uh, in Tanzania, there are a lot of cattle there. So they went to go there, not to buy, but to grab from the people who are there. So uh, they started off. Then they left Mzimba uh, going northwards at the, in, at the end of uh, 1844. So on their way, they were they raided the people like the Tumbuka as well as the Ngonde, because we are saying that they uh, started off from Zimba this time, they were proceeding further. So along the way, they found again the Tumbuka, they devastated them, the Ngonde in Karonga, they devastated them, and they proceeded to uh, to Tanzania. So in 1845, they settled at Mapupo. Mapupo means a place of dreams. What was their dream? To find the Red Zebu. So it, found, it is... Uh, said that there then at Mapupo they found the uh, red zebo then uh, it was uh, called Mapupo a place of dreams now there were the succession crisis there was the succession crisis among the Jere Ngoni so the strength of or this group or of the Ngoni that is the Jere Ngoni it was much based on the strong and effective leadership of Zwangendawa. So their leader, Zwangendawa, he was a very, very strong leader uh, who also contributed much to the strength or organization of their uh, unity or to their unity. So after his death, he died in uh, 1848. That's when he died there in Tanzania. Then after his death, his group then fragmented. It broke, it broke up and occupied various parts in East and Central Africa. So after they broke up, that group uh, broke up after the death of Zwangenda, then uh, they proceeded in different directions. They went to different directions. So Mpezeni, Mpezeni uh, was the eldest son of uh, Zwangenda. Uh, he was from the first wife. You know, the Ngoni, usually they have so many wives. They marry so many wives. So Zwangenda as well, he had so many wives. So the first wife had the son by the name Mpezeni. So he was the first uh, son from the first wife. So he would be the automatic heir to the throne. He would be the one to take over, to take charge uh, after the death of his father. But some Indunas, the people who assisted the, uh, the leader Zwangenda, they opposed that move because Mpezeni's mother had lost favor with Zwangenda. Because at one point in time, it was alleged that she tried to poison Zwangenda, his or her husband. As such, Zwangenda did not want that woman again. So with that then, it meant that uh, uh, even uh, the son, uh, from this woman was not liked by Zwangenda. That's why uh, before his death, Zwangenda, he had named Mberwa. Mberwa was the, the youngest of all his sons. The youngest was Mberwa. So before the death of Zwangenda, uh, he named that Mberwa was the one to succeed him. So for this one, uh, other Indunas, they supported Mberwa as the next king. Well, others, they did not uh, like that. So that one, 
is the thing that caused uh, the disputes or fragmentation of that Ngoni or the Jere Ngoni when they were in uh, in Tanzania there. So amidst those disputes, Ntabeni he acted as a regent. He acted as a regent. So when we say a regent is someone who governs or someone who takes over the leadership of a country in place of for the owner who is sometimes ill, he can be ill, or sometimes is young or not available. So by the time Zongenda was dying, all his sons, the oldest, the oldest was uh, about 13, between seven, uh, 13 and 17. So that one, a 17 years boy cannot be the leader, uh, cannot make the informed decision. So that's why they put Ntabeni to uh, uh, enter in place of Zwangendawa as they were waiting for the one who was mentioned to be the leader, that is Mbera, to grow so that he should be given the leadership. So the group now divided. So what were those divisions? Then there were the Tutangoni. The Tutangoni, it was another fragment, a fragment that arose from this Ngoni, the Jere Ngoni. So their leader uh, supported uh, the crowning of Mpeze. So their leader of the leader of uh, the Tutangoni is supported to say no, Mpeze being the uh, firstborn must be the leader. So after his death, that is uh, after the death of Ntabeni, uh, uh, Mugai, uh, who, was, uh, fav uh, who favored Mbero as, uh, Mbero as the next king, he became the regent. So you have to understand it in this way here. After the death of Zwangenda, then Ntabeni, he acted as the leader. But he died while acting as the leader. Then when he died, then there was another person who also took over to act because still more the sons of, uh, of uh, Zwangenda, they were still young. So uh, there was a guy who acted also as a, a regent after the death of, uh, after the death of uh, Ntaben. Therefore, Ntaben's supporters, uh, Ntaben's supporters, uh, they went out to settle in uh, Lake Victoria. So Ntaben, those who supported uh, Ntabeni, uh, they were thinking that uh, after Ntabeni maybe has uh, ruled for some time, he will be handing over to Mpezen, but he died. But Mugai, the one who took over as a regent, he favored Mberwa, just as Zwangenda said that uh, Mberwa, my son, is going to take over to succeed. Then those who supported Ntabeni, they are the ones who went to uh, to settle in uh, on Lake Victoria or near Lake Victoria. So they are the ones who are called the uh, Tuta Ngoni. So the rest of the group, Andam Guy, they decided to uh, re-enter Malawi. So this other group who favored Mberwa, they came back to Malawi. So Mgai died on his way in northern uh, Tanzania and he was succeeded by uh, Gwaza Jerry. Gwaza Jerry. So as they were moving, as they were entering Maui, then again this regent, that is Mugai, he died. Then there was another regent by the name Gwaza Jerry, who was leading uh, the group, the main group, with Mberwa, who was a king in waiting, a successor in waiting, just as uh, the owner Zwangendawa had instructed. So you can see there, there were three, almost three people who or three or four who acted, or three who acted before uh, Mberwa became the uh, the king. So Gwaza Jere, who was a senior in Duna, who was or who became the regent. So you can see to it here. We have looked at two groups here. We have mentioned two groups. The first group, the Tutangoni. Uh, the ones that supported Ntabeni, who supported uh, the crowning of Mpezen. But after the death of uh, Ntabeni, that group, then they went out 
uh, to settle in uh, Lake Victoria. And the other group, it was the group that was with the one who succeeded in Tabene, and this one was the Mugai. So Mugai, he supported the crowning of Mbero. Then he started off uh, going down, uh, coming back to, uh, to Malawi. They wanted to come back to Malawi. But he died also, Mugai died along the way. Then there was Gwaza Jere. He was still there in the same group. So the two groups, uh, the, uh, the group of Gwaza Jere now, and the group of Tuta that has now gone. Now there is also there was also another group that was the Gwangwara Ngoni, the Gwangwara Ngoni. So these ones, after the death of Mugai, uh, then Zurugama, he left uh, with another group and settled uh, at Songea in southern Tanzania. So this group, uh, they also branched to say, all right, uh, this time around we are going our way. We will go to southern part of Tanzania, and they settled at uh, at uh, at Songea. Then the other group uh, was the, uh, the Mpezeni Ngoni. The Mpezeni Ngoni. Remember, Mpezen was the firstborn. Now, it was really hard for him, it was really hard for him to say, uh, I, sh uh, I should ha humble myself, or if it were you, you cannot humble yourself to say, uh, my young brother should be the next leader. So, Mpezeni, he led other uh, people. So the youngest brother, his young, uh, with his youngest brother Mperembe. So they were together with him Mperembe. They went together and they went uh, southwards to the Bisa country and proceeded to the Bembaland, to the Wemberland there, where uh, the Wemba defeated them. So they repelled against the Wemba there when they went to the Wemba. So the Wemba, uh, they had guns. So you know, the Ngoni, they have been causing devastation wherever they went. But here it was strange that the Ngoni were defeated by uh, the Wemba. So why were the Wemba successful uh, only uh, with the Mpezen and Mperembe group? It was because the Wemba were using guns which they acquired, they acquired through their participation in slave trade from the Arabs. So they were using guns. And the Ngoni that we are talking about here, they were using they were using uh, arrows, they were using bows and arrows, they were using spears. So uh, a spear cannot uh, withstand a, a, a bullet. So that's why the Wemba, they, uh, they won that battle. So Mperembe re-entered Maui. So Mperembe re-entered Maui in 1870 and joined the Mberwa group. So Mperembe then, after they went that side of Zambia, they repaired there, then they entered Maui and joined that group which was with Gwaza Jere, they entered, uh, which, uh, which they were with the Mbera uh, as the king or the leader in waiting. So Mpezen went on to settle at Chipata in eastern Zambia. So Mpezen went to settle at Chipata in eastern Zambia. So when we talk of the Ngoni who are in Mchinji now, they are a part of or an offshoot of the Mpezen Ngoni because when we talk of Chipata and Mchinji, they were just neighbors there. So if today we talk of the Ngoni who are in Mchinji, those Ngoni, they are the offshoot of Mpezen group, Mpezen group. Then there was also Another group, this was called Chiwere Ntrovu. Can you remember Chiwere Ntrovu where or where we picked this name? Remember, after the Jerengoni, they moved from the Rosi country, they entered Zambia, they defeated the Nsenga of Peta, uh, Petauke and Chiwere Ntrovu in Zambia. So these ones, the Chiwere Ntrovu, they are not the pure Ngoni. They were uh, the assimilated people who were uh, assimilated in, uh, in Zambia. So he ran away uh, with the two sons of Gwaza Jere. So he ran away with the two of the uh, Gwaza Jere sons. So these sons were Msakambewa as well as Vuso. So you can see here, uh, Shwerenrovu. 
he was with that main group with Gwaza Jerry. Remember Gwaza Jerry is moving with the, uh, Mberwa. They are coming back to Maao. And uh, as they were moving, then she went into a he ran away, he escaped with the, uh, Gwaza Jerry's sons, the two sons, Vuso as well as uh, Msaka Mbewa. So his group failed to settle in Kasung. So they proceeded, they ran away as far as Kasung. And there they uh, failed to settle in Kasung because Mwase Kasung repelled them. They were, uh, they, they were uh, not allowed to settle in Kasung because uh, Mwase Kasung did not allow that. So Mwase Kasung again, he had guns which he had acquired from Jumbe, the slave trader who was uh, settled uh, in Kota Kota. So it uh, enabled him to defeat the Chwere Trovo's group. So why the Chwere Trovo did not settle in Kasungu? Because Masi Kasungu used guns to scare them away. Then Chwere Trovo and Msagambeo, they settled, uh, they settled in Doha. So Chwere Trovo and Msagambeo Jere, they settled in Doha. While Vuso, this Vuso Jere, uh, he settled in Jisi. So even this Shweren Trovo and the two sons, they also splitted. So we are saying here that Msakandewa and Shweren Trovo, they settled together in Doha, while Vuso, he proceeded to Jisi. That's why today we have the Ngoni in Doha, we have the Ngoni in Jisi. The Jisi Ngoni, they are the Jere Ngoni or the Vuso, uh, Vuso Jere Ngoni. Those in Doha, they are the Shwere Ntrovu as well as Msakambewa. They are also not together. Uh, Shwere Ntrovu is another part, uh, is in another part as well as Msakambewa is also uh, in another part. Then let's look at uh, Gwaza Jere. Gwaza Jere. Remember Gwaza Jere after the death of Ngwai. Uh, after the death of Zwangendawa, then there was Ntabeni. After Ntabeni, there was uh, uh, Mgai. Then after Mgai, then uh, there was Gwaza. Those were uh, like the main group, the main group leaders. So Gwaza Jere was the main group, was uh, the main group leader, or was in the group, or in the main group, uh, which Mtwalo and Mberwa were. So here you need also to take note of this name. Mtwalo was also the son of Zwangenda. And Mberwa was the youngest son of uh, Zwangenda. Uh, Mberwa was the youngest son of Zwangenda. But they were brothers with the, uh, Mtwalo. It shows as if they were, uh, they belonged to the same mother. So they entered Malawi. And along the way, they devastated the Ngoni in the process. So they proceeded further south and stopped in the Henga Valley, in the Henga Valley. So when we talk of Henga Valley, uh, it is in Rumpi District, in Rumpi District. So they settled uh, in, or they stopped at, uh, in Rumpi District, where Gwaza Jere then offered leadership to Mtwalo. So Gwaza Jere said, no, Mtwalo, you are... Uh, the older son of Zwangenda. I was just a regent. This is the high time now that you become the leader. Although your father said that Mberwa uh, should be the leader. But Mtwalo declined. He refused. He said, no, no, no. no. Uh, let my brother be the leader. So we see there uh, ultimate intelligence or humbleness by Mtwalo there. Uh, Mtwalo said, no, my brother... Uh, uh, let my father's wish be fulfilled that my uh, my young brother should be the leader. So Mberwa, now uh, he was uh, crowned as the king, as the leader of uh, the main group of the Ngoni. Uh, that was uh, Mberwa, the youngest son of uh, Zongendawa. So he was crowned at Ngonga, at Ngonga in 1855. Remember in 1855 when they settled there at Ngonga, uh, they killed Chikula Maembe Mjula. Chikula, Chikula Maembe Mjula was killed in that in, in the process uh, uh, in the struggle with the Tumbuka there. So from there the group proceeded to settle 
uh, in the present district of Mzimba. So from Ngonga, from Rumpi, they proceeded to settle in uh, Mzimba. That's where they settled. So <clears throat> on a lighter note here, it may be a surprise that the Jerengoni settled in the northern region of Mal. So why then? Why did, of all the places, why did they choose the northern region? However, the, their economy, their economy was the determining factor of their choice of settlement. Number one, uh, in the place where they settled, there was good grazing land for their cattle keeping. So it was free, again, from tsetse fry. So it was a good grazing land because it was a, a tsetse fry free country or a tsetse fry free territory. Secondly, there was enough land for settlement. So in Mzimba there, there was a vast land for settlement. And finally, the area also uh, was suitable for water sources of water sources. So the rivers, they provided water uh, for domestic uh, use as well as also for grazing uh, their animals, for animals to drink their livestock. So uh, due to water resources there, they were able to settle in Mzimba. And in 1891, the Scottish missionary, missionaries, they advised Harry Johnston. Harry Johnston uh, was the, the leader um, in that British, the British, uh, during the British uh, protection when they were looking for, they wanted to claim this uh, Nyasaland for their uh, protectorate. So the Scottish missionaries who were already here, we talk of uh, the uh, Livingstonia mission they advised Harry uh, Johnson to say, no, do not annex the uh, Ngoni land. Why? Because they were militaristic in their nature. So it would alarm them, and as a result, it would be something like causing havoc uh, with uh, them. As such, Johnson also he promised to extend the British colonial rule in the uh, area. He promised not to extend, not to extend uh, the British protection or colonial rule in that area. So he got that uh, advice from the missionaries or the Livingstonia mission to say, no, 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 don't uh, enter the Ngoni area. Don't declare that the Ngoni area is under the British. Then you are going to cause a lot of havoc there. So the promise would, uh, would base on the condition that the Ngoni also should remain in their area uh, they occupied at that time and uh, that they stop raiding uh, or harassing other people outside their country. So it was on the condition that if the Ngoni, they have really, they are sure that they are going to settle in this Mzimba district, let them be there and not attacking other outsiders because they were causing problems uh, wherever they were going. So they were attacking the Tonga, they were attacking the Tumbuka and many others. So uh, the missionaries, they, or the colonial government, they also said, no, we are not going to extend our territory to, the, uh, to Mzimba because of the Ngoni, in, on condition that uh, they also, the Ngoni also remain in their district. But uh, years of association with the missionaries had weakened the patriotic feelings of the young warriors. So now this Ngoni, it was now they were more, they were becoming more civilized as they were getting in touch with the missionaries. So the presence of the missionaries in the area uh, had convinced the Ngoni about the benefits of uh, the colonial rule. So the uh, Ngoni, while they were living as their own country, said, yes, we are not part of the British protection, uh, protectorate. But here now, uh, the missionaries they convinced them to say no it's good to be under the uh, under the colonial government because you benefit more from the whites so in that case we see to it that mzimba was the last district to come under the british protectorate after uh, a treaty with uh, sir alfred sharp sir alfred sharp uh, then the chiefs the ngoni chiefs they agreed uh, to, uh, to the extension of the British authority into their uh, country or their territory, that is in Mzimba, on 24th October 1904. So while Nyasaland was declared a protectorate in 1891, but Mzimba, 
it was in 1904. So Hector, they are sent Hector McDonald. Hector McDonald, he was uh, sent there as uh, the British resident to administer the Ngoni affairs in Mzimba. So this one, uh, Hector McDonald, on which uh, the Ngoni failing to pronounce McDonald, they were saying Madondoro. So they were saying uh, Madondoro is our is our leader here, the British or the white leader. So uh, his real name was Hector McDonald, but the Ngoni called him Madondoro. So he became the British resident mean, uh, to administer the Ngoni there. So the Ngoni agree, agreed to stop uh, the raids and to obey uh, the new laws and also to pay the tax to the uh, colonial administration. So under that uh, agreement then the Ngoni uh, came under uh, the rule or under the influence of the British. Now uh, that's what happened with the Ngoni. So here we have looked at uh, the Jere Ngoni, the Jere Ngoni. But next we have to proceed to look at the Maseko Ngoni. So having looked at the Jere Ngoni and their migration, here we have looked at a number of things how they migrated from South Africa and uh, entered different countries. We have mentioned countries like they entered Swaziland, they entered Zambia, Mozambique, Malawi, went to uh, Tanzania and came back and settled in, uh, in Malawi. We have seen how the Jerengoni led by Zwangendawa uh, traveled from South Africa and got the got settled in finally in Malawi in Mzimba and other different places. Now, in the next lesson, the next lesson we are going to focus uh, to give our attention on the Maseko Ngoni. The Maseko Ngoni. There were also another group we have already mentioned to say the Maseko Ngoni. Ngwane Maseko uh, traveled or ran away to Swaziland, and we are going to see what happened later on uh, with this group of uh, Ngwane Maseko or the Maseko Ngoni. So until that time, uh, thank you so much. Ngati simu tunzira, antu wazingu kutumani. Ajala kalime, ajala kuchwe manyasi, ajala katende ya nti. Ndipo antu wapunzira wandu wotu maso kwa mbili. Ndienga tisimu tunzira, skulu wakuikirani haba, mukala, otumidwa.